Mark chapter number 10. Begin reading in verse 17. The Bible says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I, obtained, uh, have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Let's pray. Brother Randy, why don't you take us to the throne of grace, please? Mm, yes, God grant it. Oh, God, speak to their hearts. Oh, yes, God. Help us, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Randy. And looking at uh, what to preach on today, I'll be honest with you, I was really torn. I had uh, several notes, several thoughts, looked at several things, and the heavens were shut up and got no direction from God on those things. And late last night, God began to speak to my heart about this text. I want you to notice several things. I want you to notice, first of all, the master seeker. In verse number uh, 17, he says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? This young man was serious about getting to Jesus and finding out some answers. Uh, he was seeking the master. He came running and kneeled before the master. Uh, the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Uh, I hope you came today seeking the master. Uh, I hope you came today uh, uh, looking for some direction, looking for some answers, seeking some help. Uh, because if you did, friend, you'll not leave the same way you came in. Unfortunately, in the day and age we live in, people come to church many times out of obligation. They come because they think this is where they're supposed to be. It is a great difference when you come seeking the Lord. We see the master seeker. Now notice he is a morality keeper. Look at verse number 19. The Bible says, uh, Jesus speaking to him, says, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. This young man has come seeking the master. He asked the Lord, What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And the Lord says, uh, Keep the commandments. And he begins to list some of the commandments. And this young man says, uh, I've observed all, all these from my youth up. This man is in the right place. He's talking to the right person, the Lord. He has uh, 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 heard what the Lord had to say. And he has uh, admitted he is a very good moral person. What a blessing. Amen. This man be welcome in any Baptist church. He comes seeking the Lord, and he's a good moral person. But I got some bad news for him. Being a good moral person and coming and seeking the Lord will not get you into heaven. Right. Hmm? Can I say hell today is full of a lot of good moral people. Amen. Hell is full today of people... Uh, that went to church to hear what Jesus would have to say. And can I say, uh, just coming to church won't get you into heaven. And being a good moral person 
won't get you into heaven. Amen. Mm -mm. Notice, if you will, the reality of this young man. He was a money-hungry weeper. Oh, he was a master seeker and a morality keeper, but he was a money-hungry money weeper. Uh, look at verse 22. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. He was good as long as uh, his morality was in the way, but when the Lord got to the heart of the matter and told him to go sell all they had, give to the poor, and take up his cross and follow him, he didn't want anything to do with that. Because, can I say, there are a lot of folks that will come to a certain point with God, Amen. but they won't take the next step. There's a lot of folks that will go to church. There's a lot of folks that will get baptized. There's a lot of folks that will put money in a plate. There's a lot of folks that will be good moral people. They're good to their neighbors. They're good in community. They get involved in community drives and funds and do a lot of things. But they never will give their heart to Jesus. Amen. I got to thinking about this young man. This young man is in hell today because he loved his possessions more than he loved the thought of being saved from his sin. And I want to preach on this thought for just a few minutes this morning. I want to preach on, is it worth going to hell for? Is it worth going to hell for? There's a, a countless reasons why people won't trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And I wonder today if it's really worth going to hell for. If we could somehow roll back the, the, the earth and look into the pit of hell this morning and look at the souls there and see them in torment and suffering and ask them the question, was it worth going to hell for? They'd all say no. But see, as you're here today, you have uh, anxiety and you have all kinds of issues that uh, uh, hinder you from trusting the Lord and I wonder really is it worth going to hell for can I say first of all are possessions worth going to hell for the Bible says that he went away sad at the saying went away grieved for he had great possessions really what is worth going to hell for Amen. now if God's blessed you with much you ought to thank God for that but if you're blessed to live 200 years in this world, which you won't, that's nothing compared to eternity. And if you lived in the Taj Mahal for 200 years, would that would really be worth going to hell for? Hell where the worm dieth not, where the fire is not quenched. Hell where the rich man who died and went to hell, and many commentators said it was this man, but I don't believe so. There was another rich man who died and went to hell. And that rich man who died and went to hell asked Abraham to dip his finger in a tip of water and, and put it on his tongue, that his tongue might be cooled, for he said he was tormented in the flame. The rich man asked Abraham to go unto his brothers and tell them not to come to this awful place. You ask that rich man if it was worth dying going to hell for, he'd say no. He was tormented day and night forever and ever. Was his possessions worth it? Mm -hmm. Can I say in verse 21a, it says, And Jesus beholding him loved him. Can I say today Jesus loves you and don't want you to die and go to hell? Amen. Jesus loved this young man and didn't want him to die and go to hell. That's why Jesus is telling him the truth. And he said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, and sell whatsoever thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. You see, he was a moral person, but his possessions kept him from getting to Jesus. Really, kept his heart from coming to trust in Jesus. Verse 25, Jesus kind of sums it up this way when he's talking to his disciples afterwards he says it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God Amen. are really your possessions worth dying and going to hell for hmm? I mean how much 
really could you amass out of this world? Is it really worth it? The Bible says, What profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Are your possessions worth dying going, going to hell for? So, listen. You know, I, I help out at the funeral home. I never have ever seen anybody attach a, a trailer to the hearse to go to the graveyard to take it with them. You're not going to take it. In, the Bible says, naked we came in the world, naked we're going out. Right. Amen. Hmm? Really, is it worth dying and going to hell for? I thought about something else. Is your pride worth dying and going to hell for? There's a lot of people won't get saved because they got too much pride. The Bible says in Psalms 10, 4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not at all in his thoughts. Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Proverbs 29, 23 says, a man's pride shall bring him low. Look again at verse 21. He told him to sell all that he had, that he might have treasure in heaven. And then he says, and come, take up the cross and follow me. This young man did not want to sell his possessions because he would have to be identified with Jesus Christ in taking up the cross and following him. Can I say there are some people who would be willing to come to church. There are some people who are willing to put money in a plate. There are some people who are willing to be baptized, but they do not want to submit their pride and humble themselves and repent and trust Christ. Hmm? Is pride worth going to hell for? Huh? There are a lot of people that are in hell today because pride kept them from trusting in Christ. There are people that think that they know more than God. There are people that think that they know better than God. There are people who think that they don't need God till they die and go to hell. Amen. Amen. Is pride worth going to hell for? A lot of people full of pride. I've heard people say, I'll never go to an altar and trust Christ. That may be true. But one day you'll wish you would have. There are some who will not admit they're wrong for anything Amen. when you're in hell you will the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. one day you will friend don't let pride send you to hell thought about this is people worth dying and going to hell for there's some folks that won't get saved because they're afraid of what people may think. Who cares what people think? There are a lot of people in this world that are idiots. Really, who cares what they think? What matters is what God knows. And God knows you were conceived in iniquity and in sin did your mother bring you forth. God knows you needed a Savior. God went to the cross of Calvary and shed His blood so you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He died according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. Uh, 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 he came seeking to save that which was lost. He died that death and finished it uh, and rose again victorious so you wouldn't have to go to hell. And who cares what somebody thinks? As we sit here today, people think we're crazy to believe that God wrote a book and that if we put our faith in what God said in the book and we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, then eternity we can spend it with Him in glory and in heaven. They think that we're very shallow if we have to believe that. Our former president actually said that. Hmm? The one that ran after him said we were deplorable if we believed in God. Hmm? Who cares what they think? One day they'll look at us and wish that they were us. Mm. Who cares what people in this building think? Folks say, well, what will people think if I go to the altar? Who cares? If they think anything ill, they need to be in the altar too. Mm. You know, we live in a day and an age where everybody wears their feelings on their shirt sleeves and everybody's concerned about what everybody else thinks. Listen, 
the greatest news you could ever hear is that regardless of who you are, how you were raised, what, what you've been through in your life, Jesus loves you. Brother Brian, you didn't have to get good for Jesus to love you. He loved you. When you was wicked and ungodly, He loved you. And when you called on Him, He saved you. He changed you. What a God. It didn't matter what your friends thought. What matters is that Jesus loves you. And I, want, I got some good news. You're in a church where people really, they don't care where you've been, what you've done, they love you too. Because they used to be you. And they met Jesus. And this crowd around here today is for you. They're not against you. That's why they keep the doors open. That's why uh, uh, they've prayed that you'd come and that you would come and hear the gospel and trust in Christ. Don't let people drag you off to hell. There's nobody worth dying and going to hell for. Hmm? I've seen folks that wouldn't get to hell because they or wouldn't get saved because they's afraid of, of family members or coworkers or or somebody they was dating. And I, don't let anybody drag you off into hell, friend. Amen. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I thought about this: Is piety or religion worth going to hell for? Now, used to say two things you can't discuss: religion and politics. Hmm. Because you're going to make people mad. You're going to offend people. Because people are products of their environment. And what people were raised to believe, that's what they believe. And it is a upsetting thing when you look to somebody who has been taught religion, but not taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you tell them they're wrong. They get upset. And us Baptists have gotten a bad name over the years because we just preach this book. And if you preach this book, you're going to upset people. And they'll say stuff like, you think you're better than everybody else. No, I, I'm not worth the powder to take to blow away. But Jesus said he didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. The word of God doctrine divides. You know, we live in a day and age where the religious community says, let's uh, sing, come by, ah, and let's all just come together under the umbrella of Jesus and everything. Uh, let's lay aside all doctrinal differences and let's just all sing and have a good time. There's only one problem with that. If I lay away the doctrine, then I'm laying, I'm laying aside God. I'm to proclaim His truth, not lay it aside. Brother Donald, you was raised in the Catholic faith. You was an altar boy. You was a, a good Catholic boy and all those things. It probably didn't sit well with you the first time Brother Stephen told you you were lost and you what you trusted in was wrong. But three and a half years later, after him taking you through that Bible and taking you through that Bible and taking you, saw you was wrong. Aren't you glad you got right? Amen. Hmm? Amen. Religion isn't worth going to hell for. No, hmm? Can I say... No matter what denomination, you'll find good moral people just like this, this young rich man. You'll find good people in denominations. And can I say you'll find saved people in denominations other than the Baptist faith. But religion is not worth dying and going to hell for. Now, I'm not going to pick on religion. Let me pick on Baptists. You might have been raised Baptist. You might have been in Baptist church all your life. But you still got to get born again. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say to you, you must be born again. Just because you've been raised in a Baptist church doesn't give you a free pass to heaven. I wouldn't let being a Baptist send me to hell. I'd put my faith and trust in the Lord, not the Baptist faith. I got news for you. There's a lot of Baptists that are wrong. Hmm. Is religion worth going to hell? I really don't want to preach too much on hell today, but I will tell you this. The Bible makes it clear there's different degrees of punishment for those that die and go to hell. Just like there's different rewards for those that die and go to heaven. Where much is given, much is required. And can I say, uh, 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 people like Adolf Hitler and, and, and some of these monsters that have uh, brought great disgrace to humanity, they're going to suffer greatly in hell. But can I say, somebody that dies and goes to hell from a Baptist church pew where the truth has been preached, they're going to suffer greatly in hell. Yes, sir. Is religion worth dying and going to hell for? Let me say this you're about to faint so let me just say this 
Is your past worth dying and going to hell for? Amen. Now, I'm no fool. I'd like to say everybody's been dealt a good card, a good hand of cards in your life. Nobody's ever had any problems. That's just not true. Some of you have faced great hardship in your life. Some of you are products of broken homes. Some of you are products of abusive homes. Some of you have faced ill and hardship in school and in your life. Things that uh, uh, really you should have never had to face. But you see, when Adam and Eve chose to sin, sin came into this world and sin has passed on through the world and sin is, is progressing and folks do terrible things because of sin. And you might be the product of somebody who has faced some grave, terrible things. Now listen, I hate that you had to live that life. I wish I had a magic wand and I could wave it and all that would go away. But the reality is, don't let that keep you from going to heaven. Amen. Jesus loves you and Jesus will save you and change your life regardless of your past. You may have been a wicked sinner. It doesn't matter. God already saved the chief of sinners in, the, in, in Saul of Tarsus. And if he'd save him, he'll save you. Hmm? There are folks in here today that are dressed up real nice, that look great, that uh, you think, boy, what a holy person. You should have seen them before they met Jesus. Hmm? But see, grace and the Lord Jesus changes people. And the Lord can change you regardless of what you face. Don't let your past send you to hell. It's not worth going to hell for. Hmm? Don't let somebody who has put in your mind that you're unlovable send you to hell. You are loved. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Amen. There are folks in this church that love you today. You say, you don't know me. No, but we know about you because some of us were you. God loves you today. And he'll save you and change your life. There's some here today that feel like everything's against you because you've been told you'll never amount to anything. I want to tell you something. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, you can overcome and do great things in your life. Amen. Listen, you are somebody and you're worth something. Say, what am I worth? I'm worthless. No, you're not. You're meant so much that God bankrupt heaven to save you. He sent His only begotten Son in the world to die for you because He thought so much of you. You're worth more than all the world to God. Amen. Don't let your past send you to hell. What a different story this would have been if that young man would have said, Okay, Lord, and sold everything he had and gave to the poor. said, Did people do that? Zacchaeus did. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Huh? When he met the Lord, he went and made it right with everybody he robbed. What a different story if this young man would have said, Yes, Lord, he did that. And, he, and then he, he got in line with the Lord and became one of the Lord's disciples. Who knows? He might have been a great preacher. Might have been a great evangelist. Might have changed the community. Who knows what the story could have been. But he went away sad and grieved because he had great possessions. He said, It's not worth it. I'll just continue my path. And he died and went to hell. Friend, don't die and go to hell. Whatever it is, it's not worth going to hell for. The Lord gave me this message because you're sitting here today and the Lord loves you so much He wanted you to hear you didn't have to die and go to hell. Some of you have been saved by the good grace of God. Aren't you glad you took up the cross and followed Him? Amen. Amen. Wasn't it worth it Amen. to know that heaven will be your home? Friend, if you're here today and you're not saved, whatever it is, it's not worth going to hell for. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. 
That's a big fancy term for saying we're just going to invite you to come to Jesus. But not like this young man came. In reality, this young man came to Jesus looking for a license to get a pass to go to heaven but still live how he was living. He didn't like what he had to hear. Today, you may have come in looking for a license and might not have liked what you heard, but you don't have to go into hell. And we're going to give you an invitation to come to Jesus and give your heart and life to Him. You say, I don't know how to be saved, preacher. If you come, we've got folks all over this church. Take a Bible and show you what the Bible says about being saved. Can I say, it's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're willing to turn from your life and turn to Jesus and come and ask Him to save you, He'll save you today. During this invitation, if you'll just come, we'd love to introduce you to the Lord. If you're here today and you're saved and you know somebody that's not saved, maybe you need to get in the altar and pray for them. Say, pray, God, show them it's not worth dying and going to hell for. This world's spinning out of course. I believe we're living in the last of the last days before Jesus comes back after His church. Oh, we're, we're way, way far behind where we should be in telling folks about Jesus. So maybe you need to come get a burden for somebody. Maybe you got a burden for somebody and need to ask God to help them. Maybe you just need to come thank God that you realized it wasn't worth going to hell for. Maybe God spoke to you about something else this morning. Don't turn him away. Amen. The privilege and the preciousness of spending time with Jesus is worth far more than this world has to offer. Amen. And if God has spoke to your heart, you give God your heart and your attention. And friend, you'll leave out of here blessed. But if you're here today and you're not saved, it's not worth going to hell for. Hey, we love you. This preacher loves you. But most importantly, the Lord loves you. Don't die and go to hell, friend. It's not worth it. If Jesus saved me, he'd save you, friend. And he wants to save you. Why don't you let him save you? Why don't you let him rescue you from what is going to drag you off into hell? It's not worth going to hell for. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While he's coming, folks are coming to pray. Friend, if you're not saved, once you come, let us show you how to be saved. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, I've tried my best to be obedient. Oh, Lord, I know this wasn't a feel-good message, but it was the right message because it's the one you gave. Oh, Lord, I pray if there's anybody here today lost, oh, Lord, you, through cords of love, you touch their heart, convict them of their sin. Help them to realize whatever it is, it's not worth dying and going to hell for. God, help them to come and give their life to Jesus. God, if there's somebody here that's saved but struggling, I pray you'd strengthen them. God, if there's somebody here saved but, Lord, just seeking direction, you'd give them that direction. Lord, bless this invitation. Lord, there's folks all over this altar. God, just help them. Speak to their hearts. Touch their lives. God, maybe somebody's here saved, but it's been a long time since they got broken. Lord, I pray you'd break them for your honor and for your glory. Help them to realize folks are dying and going to hell, and their hardness may be causing somebody to stumble over their life and die and go to hell. God, just speak in this invitation. Lord, we'll thank you for what you do, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.